gonna be vaguely organized for once and plan ahead a bit for my 50k subs milestone vid. What do you want to see? Toolbox tour. No one will pick that. Assembly bench tour. Making the Gosford's handyman. Sign and wood. I buy another new build. Pick the Gosford handyman sign. Pick the Gosford handyman sign. Oh, what? Okay, I must confess, I do normally try and sort my toolbox out at least once a year. It's normally the sort of job that I like to do on a really sunny day when it's not windy and I can just empty it all out outside. And last year I didn't get a chance to do this at all, so this is two years of accumulated junk. The other thing as well is that whenever I'm doing a toolbox tidy, what I try to do is get rid of tools that I don't use very often and replace them with tools that I now do want in my toolbox. And that kind of evolves over time. And the only extra tools I want to get in, where this is kind of more of a swap, is a new voltage detector pen, because this one seems to have broken. I'll have a look at that. So I've got a new voltage pen to shove in there, always handy. I've got like a Festool wooden ruler thing that I got given as a present, but it started falling to bits and all the paints kind of coming off. I haven't, I haven't used this at all. I can't remember, it was like a Father's Day present or something like that, but all the paint's coming off. As I say, if it can't even handle life sitting on my workbench not getting used, then it ain't gonna survive in my main toolbox. And one of the main things I want to include in my toolbox now is an electric pencil sharpener. By far one of my favourite workshop gadgets of all time. Link in the description. So I need to make a bit of room for that. Uh, Maybe if I just like clap my hands, this will all magically tidy itself up. Nope. And you know what it is? I'm looking at this and my, where's my hammer? Oh, I've left it in the house. I've got it. Don't panic. And my setting tool. I kind of did it. So what I've tried to do, I've separated it out Everything to this side of the red line is stuff that goes in the top half of my toolbox. It tends to be kind of smaller bits and pieces. Everything in the middle here is stuff that like lives in the bottom of my toolbox. And it tends to be obviously bigger tools. And then over on this side, we've got tiny little kind of long things. Things like rulers, paintbrushes, spare zip ties. And of course, the whole objective here is to get extra stuff in and also get rid of some stuff that I never use. As you can probably tell, there's probably quite a lot of stuff I can get out, but I do want that in. We we'll maybe want to try and get this uh, folding rule in. Before I show you the tools, I should probably show you the toolbox. This is just a Stanley thing. I don't know the model or whatever. I've had it for about 20 years or thereabouts, and it's lasted this long without any problems. It's got like this flappy little bit at the top here for tiny little bits and pieces. That is really, really handy. And then, not much to it. It's just a top section and a bottom section. So obviously all the big tools go down there. My smaller tools go in the tray at the top. And uh, it's a sturdy toolbox. As I say, it's lasted a long time. I use it as a step and all sorts. So before I start showing you everything, I probably should explain this is just my general purpose toolbox. This isn't a woodworking or joinery or carpentry toolbox. This is just my take it to every single job toolbox. But what I don't keep in here is my sharp 
tools, things like chisels, uh, planes, spoke shaves, basically anything that's going to get just destroyed. I do keep, where is it? I do keep just one old chisel in here just for emergency purposes really, but I tend to carry my chisels around in a separate leather bag to keep them nice and sharp because they would get absolutely trashed. I've had these tools for best part of 30 years and there's not many tools that I haven't either already had in my toolbox and got rid of or I've already got in my toolbox and I use it. So please do suggest things that I should include. I'm not saying don't suggest things but there's probably a reason I haven't already got it. But you might surprise us and come up with something I've never seen before. Let's start on the top section of my toolbox. So this is everything that goes in the lifty out tray section. I'll show you everything I've got in there. That doesn't belong in there, that's in the bottom section. But most of the stuff in the top section is all screwdrivers and smaller hand tools and stuff like that. Selection of flathead screwdrivers, posi drive, obviously the odd Phillips driver because you do run into them. Let me see, where shall we start? We'll start at the bottom here and we've got a whole selection of like jewelers, screwdrivers, tiny little ones, the odd speciality one, this sideways right angle screwdriver is sometimes very handy if you get into awkward situations. Scraper, I've got two scrapers, I've got a big scraper that lives in the bottom but this is my main smaller kind of one inch scraper. Adjustable spanner, big Phillips driver, they're really handy for your locking cams type fittings. A whole bunch of screws, they shouldn't be there. Ignore them, we'll come back to the screws. A whole bunch of uh, fuses, you never know when a fuse might blow in something. In the UK obviously there's fuses in the plugs and it's not unheard of for fuses to blow but it's becoming more and more rare that you ever run into a situation where you need a fuse but uh, somehow a wall bolt has migrated into this toolbox. Uh, a couple of radiator bleed keys. A bunch of random wall plugs. We'll come back to that. Pens and pencils and sharpies. Crayon. Rubber. Whole selection. I, I need to sharpen all of those. Snips. Uh, voltage detecting screwdriver things. My adjustable bevel. My foldy up DeWalt pocket knife thing. Which generally lives in my pocket to be fair but I'm just showing you it here. Voltage detector pen. And then all this stuff up here, uh, let me bring the camera around to try and show you all this a bit closer. We've got a whole selection of hex keys, I need to sort through those and I'm not going to do it on camera, it'll be the most boring thing in the world. That has just accumulated over two years of doing jobs where you use hex keys so I need to sort through those. No sane person needs that quantity of hex keys. Punches, so I've got a spring-loaded centre punch, they're quite handy. You can adjust the tension at the top there. Uh, a couple of other just bog-standard punches, these are good for hammering nail heads down and whatnot. So I've got a big long one and a slightly shorter one. I've also got a, um, a spring-loaded type one there. These are good for doing hinges, so you basically, uh, have I got a hinge? pop that in the hole and then you hit that end with a hammer and it uh, marks marks the spot. Random tools for taking car radios out because when I'm not doing this I just go around car parks taking car radios out of cars. That's a joke by the way. Then a random selection of like spanners and again that, I can't even remember what they came with but they tend to just accumulate. Uh, like a cheapy punch down tool thing. What's happened to my good punch down tool? Hmm. I need to find that. I've got a proper punch down tool somewhere, but I've got a whole bunch of random brackets and a random hinge, and then a whole load of random electrical connectors, so waggle connectors and horrible chocolate block type connectors as well, but they're sometimes handy depending on what you're doing. Most of this is going to go a journey, by the way. This is, again, just stuff that's accumulated over a couple of years in Andy's toolbox where things go to die. Talking of things going to die, these are all screws that have no business being in my toolbox. You know when you're on a job and you end up just chucking screws into your toolbox when you're finished for the day? These are all screws that have accumulated through being chucked into my toolbox at the end of a job and I need to sort through them all. I do keep a selection of screws 
in my toolbox. I'll talk about them in a minute, but these shouldn't even be here. They've just kind of magically migrated into my toolbox without permission. Bottom section of my toolbox. This tends to be bigger tools and tools that I don't use very often. My compass for scribing should be in the top section. That's obviously after a job where I've used like a wet fish to try and sharpen the pencil. Yeah, all I would say is if you're getting a compass for scribing, make sure it's a, a locking type. You don't want a one where if you knock it, then you're gonna alter the distance. So you want a one that's got some way of locking the distance between the end point and your pencil. So you, you type that you can just pull apart and squish together with your hands, they're no use. You need like a one with a burly wheel thing on it. Oh, and this is quite a handy little gadget here. I don't know what it's called, but I don't know, screw holder. It's made by Stanley apparently, but it just clips onto any screwdriver and it's like a screw holder type thing. Unfortunately, this particular one, it only fits on to screwdrivers that have quite a thin kind of, you must be able to get ones that fit onto kind of more normal size screwdrivers, but all it does is it holds a screw, but I'm well aware that that's a Phillips screwdriver and that's a posi drive. Don't start. Uh, we've got just a pry bar. I like these kind of flat type ones. These are very, very handy to have. These, I'll come back to these. Man, possibly the most useful tool that I've got in my toolbox. I'll come back to them. Random spanner, can't remember why that ended up even in my toolbox instead of in my spanner collection. Setting tool for the expanding metal anchors. Long nose pliers, scraper with a funny shaped end, big flat blade screwdriver, another random spanner, hacksaw, cheapy spirit level, wire brush, a small saw. Having a saw that's small enough to fit inside your toolbox is the handiest thing in the world. This is just a really small hand saw that lives in my, obviously I've got other proper big hand saws, but it's handy to have one that fits in my toolbox. Along with a plasterboard saw as well, just a little plasterboard saw thing. Some scissors, quite good scissors. My square, uh, oh, we'll come around this way. Electric pencil sharpener, as I say, handiest tool in the world. Done. Wire strippers, two different junior hacksaws, one with a metal blade and one with a wood blade, a butter knife. You wouldn't believe how handy it is to have a butter knife in your toolbox because it's really, really strong. And if you ever need to like pry apart something or you need to just slide something down a thin gap and open it up a bit, or there's all sorts of situations where having a blunt butter knife that isn't gonna break in your toolbox is very handy. A uh, hammer, obviously a scraper that I can put normal Stanley blades into. Mole grips, bigger scraper, a spare Stanley knife type thing. My spirit level that lives in my toolbox. A bunch of different electrical tape and some kind of, it's not duct tape, it's like a wrench, adjustable wrench, crimping tool. A glue gun that I didn't even realize was in my toolbox. These are uh, circlip removers, very handy, especially if you're in a situation where you need to remove a circlip. Stanley tape measure, which is imperial and metric, and also a good tape measure. Bigger adjustable spanner. Talked about the chisel earlier. It is pretty sharp, but the yeah, it doesn't exactly get looked after. A whole array of tiny, tiny, Little spanners, look at that. More, God, like I need more hex keys. Folding ruler that I mentioned. Short line is very, very handy to have for many different situations. A random box. Now, the reason I've got a random box of screws is because obviously I've got my main OCD boxes that I carry around, but this has all sorts of random stuff in it. You know, we've got like big coach screws, we've got like big nuts here, we've got like random, you know, it's just random stuff. You can't plan what's gonna be in this box because this is kind of my magic problem solver 
box of because generally if something really weird has broken and it's like oh i need a threaded m8 screw with a locking nut on it normally i can find that somewhere in here without having to go through all my ocd boxes or go out and buy something so this is kind of a bit of a problem solver box completely unplanned there's no point planning it because you never know what you're going to need out of it so that's very handy to have and as I say, these things here, so this is a magnet on a bendy stick, which is very handy for obviously many different things. And this, check this out, this is a bendy stick with a like a gripper thing on the end. You see that? So you, I push that and then that comes out the end. So if you've dropped a screw behind a toilet system or something like that and you can't get it, then... Uh, this is a tool for the job. I've had that for about 30 years, so don't ask me where I got it. Then, all this tiny stuff lives in the little flappy bit at the top of my toolbox. We've got spare glue sticks that I forgot about. A whole bunch of spare hacksaw blades, so we've got like metal ones, wood ones, big one. A whole bunch of fine files, so we've got a whole selection of different shaped tiny little files. These are very handy for many different situations that I run into. Spare knife blades, a whole bunch of feeler gauges for some reason, and a quite lovely folding metal rule. A random selection of smaller spanners. Again, these tend to like just come with stuff and you end up hoarding them. A couple of fishing weights that are generally attached to string, which is a thing that's currently missing from here. So I need to get a bunch of string in here. I do normally keep some string in my toolbox, but um, I've used it all up. An elastic band, again, having a few elastic bands in the toolbox is sometimes handy for various things. A bunch of zip ties. I have a selection of just fine detailing paint brushes. So everything from fatter ones that I maybe use for like glue application right through to tiny little ones which I'll just use for little bits of touch up of paint once a project's finished so just little detailing brushes really. We've got, I can't remember what you call these, it's like a bendy squiggly thing. And I've just remembered my profiling gauge is missing as well, I'll need to search around for that. And then a whole bunch of rulers, I've got a metal ruler quite a nice longer plus so there you go I think that's everything now what I'm not gonna do is put you through the absolutely insane boredom of sorting all this out when I put it all back into the toolbox because that's gonna take me a little while and me explaining like oh, well I could do with one fishing weight but not the other fishing weight for every single little thing in my toolbox you would go insane so if you do have questions as to why there's certain things that I'm keeping and why there's certain things that I'm not keeping, then let me know. What tends to happen is, is that it's a toss up between whether it goes in my toolbox, on the wall in my workshop, or gets packed away somewhere, never to see the light of day ever again. There we go, all done. I've now got the string in that I talked about, uh, the car radio tools have migrated into there as well. Tidy and ready to rock in there, and then in the top section, obviously main hand tools and whatnot round here. All my little jewellers, screwdrivers and things are in this little section here. Over here I've got my punches and bigger hex keys tend to live in this section. Down here we've got kind of random stuff little brackets, the radiator bleed keys. I've got a selection of wall plugs, totally random selection of screws that I've got at the top here. This is just like a kind of grab pile of screws. Pens, pencils. If you would like a Gotham Handyman pencil to celebrate the 50,000 subs, then if you go to uh, my little shop, uh, gothithandyman.com slash shop, you can get some Gotham Handyman pencils off there. Ah, and one thing that has vanished that does need to go in here. Let me see if I can find it. Nope, can't find them. Uh, I do normally keep a couple of paracetamol or ibuprofen in the top section up here. And I did have some and uh, they've disappeared. And then the bottom section comfortably managed to fit in everything I wanted to fit in. I've got my pencil sharpener that I wanted to get into there. 
So I can now just do that straight off from the toolbox, which is awesome. I've got my screw box down there. I did filter out many, many screws and they're now in my screw nest, which is where they'll go to die for their second stage of purgatory in the workshop. I've even got the folding rule somewhere at the bottom there. Ready for another year's work. That just leaves me to say a massive, massive thank you to every single one of my 50,000 subscribers and everyone new who's hopefully come on board since this video came out because you might be watching this in future time. I have got so much more planned for this channel and I just haven't got enough time to just churn the videos out. I'm getting them out as quick as I can. The new Build House series is going to be ramping up and kicking into gear again. Many things to talk about on that side. More SketchUp videos to come. Of course, more workshop videos. You will definitely get to see the making of my Gosforth Handyman sign, whether you like it or not. I would also like to mention as well, my original plan for the flags at the back of the workshop. I think these were in order of how many subscribers I've got per country or something, I can't remember. But the original plan was to change them for different stats every now and then. But my colour printer's packed in, so I can't print out any new flags at the minute until I've sorted that out. That's going to be a video. Don't buy a Dell colour printer, piece of junk. So as soon as I've worked out a way of printing out new flags, then I will be changing things up a bit at the back, because you'll be sick of America, the UK, India, Canada, and Australia, who have been up there forever. Next milestone's gonna be 100K. I think that'll be a little while away, maybe back end of next year or something. But if you could give this a quick like and share and thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and all the usual kind of stuff, it's always appreciated. But if you are new to the channel, please do hit subscribe because it would be lovely to have you on board. Obviously a massive special thank you as well to everyone on Patreon, especially the folk who are all doing the $5 a month thing to have their names scrolling up the side here. You are amazing and you are keeping this channel going. So thank you everyone for your help. Thank you for your support. I shall see you next time. Bye.